Welcome to this video on agriculture and food resources. The focus of this video will be on food security. I'm Aida Awad from Broward College. The learning targets for the video include describing the pros and cons of future trends in agriculture, analyzing food security data to determine regions where there is food insecurity and cases of undernourishment, describing the causes of food insecurity, and outlining a pathway to global food security. Across many urban areas, we are seeing sites where unused or underused spaces are turning into food production sites. Now these not only improve food access, but they allow urban residents to have fresher food that has a lower cost of transportation because it is produced locally. It makes a much more efficient use of water. And we're even seeing examples of things like green roofs which reduce flooding, reduce energy use in the buildings that they cover, and can be sites for producing food. So some optimistic ha things happening in urban environments. However, the data show that there are 795 million people in the world that lack food for healthy, productive lives. And this is 2015 data from the United Nations. In fact, most of those people are in rural areas of developing countries. And the World Health Organization claims that 15% of children under the age of five suffer from undernutrition. And undernutrition is defined as a lack of nutrients and calories needed for healthy growth. And that makes those children particularly susceptible to disease on top of the fact that they often have poor health care. The map here shows us the dire straits that much of Sub-Saharan Africa is in, in terms of food insecurity, as well as some of India and countries nearby. So there are a total of 54 countries that are low income and food deficit, which means they cannot produce enough food and they cannot afford to import the food that they need. So 20 countries, 16 of which are in sub-Saharan Africa commonly experience food insecurity. Oftentimes, these causes of food insecurity are increased by changes that accompany climate change. On this slide, we see data about world grain production and grain production per person. And we understand now that annual world grain production has doubled between 1970 and 2010 but because the population has grown, the grain produced per person has not changed. So the green line on the graph shows us the total grain production, and the brown line shows us that the grain production per person has not increased. So as an example of this, in the USA, we have about 1.2 metric tons per person of grain available, although a lot of that is fed to livestock. However, in a place like Zimbabwe, only 90 kilograms per person, so a big disparity in the availability of grain to feed people. Further increases in global food production may not be sustainable, and that is due to several reasons, including changes and impacts of climate change. And it is noted that stabilizing human populations would really help to further stabilize the food supply. So what are some solutions that we can look to as a pathway to solve the problem of food insecurity? Well, we can increase sustainable production of food, improve food distribution networks, promote economic development in underdeveloped or developing countries, ensure education and health care for women, and ensure education for small-scale farmers that are producing significant amounts of basic nutrition in many regions where food insecurity is a particular problem. I think we're ready to look back at the learning targets and head off to the Mastery Check quiz. So we described the pros and cons of the future trends of agriculture. We analyzed food security data to determine regions where food insecurity and undernourishment are problems. We described the causes of food insecurity and outlined a pathway to global food security. Go ahead and take your mastery check quiz and I'll see you in class.